Well, hello there. Welcome. Great to have you with us. It is another powerful time. Jen of Faith Matters. Yes. And today, I'm so excited. We had such a great week last week, didn't we? We certainly did. And uh, today we are going on. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us. And wherever you're watching from today, may you just be blessed. May you just enjoy this time as we spend these 30 minutes in the Word of God, because this is the place where we know faith does matter. Absolutely. And what a wonderful journey we've been going on, learning about the foundations of faith. Mm. We're learning about those foundation principles. And I really believe when we have these foundation principles set in stone, right. it doesn't matter what comes against us. It doesn't matter how strong the storm is. We will be so secure in who we are in Christ Jesus. And it's like that helmet of salvation is so secure on us because we know we're rooted and grounded in a truth that is for eternity. Yeah. Everything on this, on this earth, everything will come and go. Circumstances will constantly change. But the word never changes. And when we're rooted and grounded in its truth, it will last for eternity and is stable and sound and we can only be victorious when we root it in it. That's right. So get your Bibles, get your pens, get your notebooks ready because we're going to go on in the Word of God and teach today as we have over these past few weeks on these basic subject matters that are changing our lives. Come with us and get ready. Well, there you have it. We are ready and we are all systems go. Now, remember, your letters, we so appreciate. We, we love your letters, okay? So write to us at fm at myfaithtv.com. We love getting your comments. Tell us what a blessing this program is as well to us. And we want to be able to hear uh, from you, okay? So, so please let us know how this program is blessing you. Jen, let's pick up where we <laughs> left off last week and... We've been speaking about this tug of war. We've been speaking about this fight between the spirit and the flesh. And Romans 8, verse 5 and 6 from the Amplified Classic Bible puts it so beautifully. It says, for those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires, set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. But those who are according to the spirit and are controlled by the desires of the spirit, set their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Goes on to say this, Now the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, is death. Death that comprises of all of the miseries arising from sin, both here and thereafter. But the mind of the Holy Spirit is life mm -hmm. and soul peace, both now and and forevermore. Oh, what a it. powerful scripture. I love that. I love it so much, especially to understand this one part that we read. It says that, but those who are according to the Spirit and are mm. controlled by the desires of the Spirit set their minds on. That's right. And seek after That's the things right. that gratify the Holy Spirit. Our minds. Wow, Andre, whatever you set your mind on is what controls you. Mm. We, I don't think we will ever, I, I hope that we get to the place where we begin to understand how important our minds are. You know, the Bible, we, we get taught that it is a, the control center. It says right. whoever you give your mind to controls you. Mm. This mind is the control center of your body. And so your mind has got to be setting itself on things that are of the spirit right. and not of the flesh it's so so important because it says even if you are in the flesh and your mind set on the things of the flesh well that's the way you're going to be going mm. so our mind is really the key that we need to take a look here well let's talk a little bit about the renewing of our mind because that i think is we've spoken about this we've taught a series before but as we're talking in this series again uh, we've realized that the renewing of the mind is the key to the success of absolutely. every one of us absolutely and that's you know, we spoke about how um, you have a spirit man and that spirit has got to dominate the flesh. That's right. Now, how is it going to do that? Because the flesh is, is going to listen to the mind. Mm. Your body is going to obey what your mind says it must do. That's how it works. That's right. So how is it ever going to do what your spirit says when your mind chooses to set that when you rather you in control of your mind right when you choose to set your thoughts on the things of God and his which is his word 
So when, when you make a choice, the more I set my thoughts on God's word and invest in understanding and meditating God's word, I am going to set a pattern for my mind. I'm going to set a, a principle, like a standard for my mind. That's right. In fact, I suppose you could call it brainwashing. I'm going to wash my mind with the word of God, wash away all those mindsets that shouldn't be there, get them right out and replace them with a godly mindset. This is how I am supposed to live. This is how I'm supposed to think. Mm. And we start thinking according to God's way. That's how our minds come in line with our spirits. So our spirits and our mind are in agreement. Mm. And we know what the Word of God says. Where two or more come into agreement, whatever they believe is established. So if your spirit man and your mind, your soul are in agreement together, which would be whatever the Word of God says, Mm. never contradicting what the Word says, then anything is going to be established. Whatever the word says will be established in your life. That's right. Because they've come into agreement. That's right. You know, Jen, the the scripture, and I, I want us to maybe look at some other scriptures here because uh, it, it says in, in Romans 8, 9, it says, but you are not living the life of the flesh. You are living the life of the spirit. Yes. If the Holy Spirit of God really dwells within you, directs and controls you, but if anyone does not possess the Holy Spirit of Christ, he, he is none of His. In other words, he does not belong to Christ and he's not truly called a child of God. So the thing is, when your mind is set, when you know in your heart that you love God with everything, then you have a desire for your mind to be controlled by the things of God. Absolutely. You don't even want to fight it. That's right. You don't want to fight it because you know that you belong to God. And if you belong to God, that means you want to live for Him. That's right. You want to live like Him. You want to have the same mindset as Him. Because anything to do with God is good. Mm. It's wonderful. There's freedom. Freedom from the bondages of fear and worry and and having your circumstances dictate to you. You don't have to have that anymore when you think like God and when you uh, come in line with Him. It's it's completely different. You are now free from from sin. It has no power over you. You don't have to be miserable. You don't have to have lack. It doesn't matter what comes against you. You will always be victorious. I mean, that's who who doesn't want that life? That's right. That's right. You, you know, I've always joked and I've always said this, but it's not really a joke. It's quite honest and true. You, you, you could never pray in the spirit or pray just a general prayer on the one side of you and try and, you know, allow your body physically to be involved in something on the other side. At the same time. At the same time. <laughs> you, you, you can't do it. Try it. I challenge you. Try it. <laughs> try and pray in the spirit and smoke a cigarette. Yep, All right, absolutely. So you, you can't do it. It's completely it, it, antagonistic it, it, it to it. Competes against each other. You can't have the infilling of the presence of God on the inside of you and allow an addiction to control you. At the same time. At the same time. Stop praying in the spirit. Stop praying. Ma, the cigarette tastes good. Yeah. Or the alcohol tastes good. Or whatever. Uh, a deceit or whatever uh, evil thing is is you back. Or fear. Or fear. All right, you, you can't, that's why the Bible says pray in the Spirit, and we, we'll talk about that in, in programs in the future. That's why it says pray in the Spirit and, and watch what happens. You edify yourself, you build yourself up. Yes. Because what does it do? It builds the inside of you. In fact, your it, most holy faith is yeah, what it says. It makes you bigger on the inside than you ever dreamed you were. Yeah. And that's what I want you to understand. Very so good. so as, as, as you face this, as you come into this, Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, I beg you in the view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all of your members and faculties Mm -hmm. as a living sacrifice. What is a faculty? It's your mind. Absolutely. It's a part of you that needs to be presented to God as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated and well-pleasing to God, which is what? It's your reasonable, Mm -hmm. rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. So God says from his word, Paul writing in the book of Romans, he he writes and he says, guys, hey, come on, get this together. Do this. If you are born again. If you're born again, surely on the inside of you, show it. 
and get your mind in line and stop this nonsense on the sidelines. Absolutely, just stop, renew your stop mind. Stop all of these things. Get, get on this board. Get sorted out and everything else gets sorted out along, along the way. Now, that doesn't mean fear doesn't come and attack you. That doesn't mean anxiety and, and all the pressures of life and the desires of the flesh don't come and, and attack you. Let me tell you, they will always attack you. They'll never stop. You. They'll never stop attacking Jesus you. even said that. Jen, I mean, we were doing a live program just the other day and we were talking about it. We did a, a great live show and, and we did it and we spoke about building the house of God and the vision of the dome and, and all of that. And we, we were raving about it and we were talking about the vision and building the house and and all of that and put your effort into the house and what do we do we get home and we got a house problem <laughs> all right we get home and there's a natural there's a natural disaster at our own house all right and 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 it's the last thing and i looked at this and i just i had no other reason but to laugh oh wow because i thought yeah you are when you're building the kingdom of god and when you're focusing on building his purpose and you just and made his a plan. commitment and you've to just do made that. a commitment and we had just publicly <laughs> in the live meeting say we're going to sow yeah. as a family we're going to give we're going to be a part of this vision we're not going to just allow it you into know, the kingdom into vision. the kingdom of god and 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 what do we do we, we look get at home this and we get home <laughs> and we've got a natural disaster that at needs, home that, that needs that, money that needs money to fix it let me tell you the natural thing to do in a case like that is saying, oh, oh hold sorry, back, Lord. Hold back from I, your... I, I can't, yeah. I'm not going to give that money anymore that I was going to give because I need that money to fix my, my natural disaster. Yeah. Okay? That's how it is in the, in the things of God. It says, do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after, adapted to ex external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its ideas or ideals, its new attitude, so that you may prove to yourselves what is this good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight for you. Exactly. What a great scripture. So what do you do in a case like that? Well, you go back to what the Word says, yeah. that God says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Right. There is scripture after scripture after scripture that says when you give first to God, mm -hmm. what is your reasonable service? And I'm talking now in a financial side because that's what where our crisis was, where our mind was fighting what to do. Yeah. So we resort not to what our flesh is telling us in the natural, but we resort to what the Word promises us in the Spirit. And so we made a decision to laugh at the devil. And no matter what crisis comes, we know we made a commitment. We give to God first, knowing that he loves us and he cares for us. And he has promised to take care of every single need because we put him That's first. Right. That's right. And so, so you can, you get to the place where you actually laugh at the devil. And that argument of, oh no, but you have to, you have to, it actually, it goes. It's like the enemy has no, there's no foothold for that thought in your mind anymore because you've switched over, causing your mind to come in line with the will of God. Yeah. And then there's nothing, there's nothing that, that the enemy can have to hold on to. That doubt can't be there because you are so focused on what God says. You are so convinced of it that it doesn't shake you or move you from what God wants you to do. That's right. Jen, let's take some time now. Let's talk. A little bit about how do I take control of my thoughts? That's good. Okay, I want to I, I want to help you. I, I want this to be a time that that uh, you you look at this and you watch this program. And even if you're watching on any of the VOD platforms or you miss one, go back to our app and download the Faith Broadcasting Network app and 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 watch this particular program again or the one before, or the one after, as we deal with this. Because I want you to realize that that. The mind is that control center of our lives, but the Bible says whatever we give our minds, whatever we give to our minds is what controls us. Okay, so whatever I, you I, give your mind whatever to, whatever you give your minds to controls us. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I want you to realize that, and and I want you to answer the question in your heart and in your life: uh, if if I'm going to be able to take control of my thoughts, then I need to make sure what I'm giving my mind to is a little starting point because then it won't control me any longer. I will get control by giving it the right things. Yes, absolutely, because you know that every thought 
it comes from somewhere. That's it right. has an origin. And it can only come from one of two places. So your thoughts will either be fear-based or they will be faith-based. Yeah. Now you can never stop thoughts from coming into your mind. That's right. In fact, the Bible speaks about our minds as being the battlefield. Mm. That is where the war actually takes place. You know that no weapon formed against you can prosper. The enemy has no right to touch you if you're a child of God. The only area that he attacks you or is allowed to attack you is in the area of your mind. So he will bring those thoughts. And let me tell you, the most effective time that he has to attack you is the three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> he will wake you up in the morning when everything else is dark and you are in a half a sleep state and he attacks your mind with thoughts, any thoughts that are negative. And the problem is very often we think that those thoughts are actually responsible. Yeah. We think, oh, I'm being responsible now by worrying about this. But that's not what the word says. So any thought that comes that is fearful or worrying or degrading, where it pushes you down. I mean, I know I've spoken to some really good friends of mine and they have told me the area where they battle with the enemies putting thoughts in their minds is about how they are, they're the worst mom that could, you know, that, that's around or how they don't even, uh, they feel like they are invisible. Mm. Like they, they're not doing anything worthwhile. They, their lives aren't amounting to anything. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Those worthless thoughts, anything that is negative or contrary to what the word of God says, that is a fear-based thought and it is an attack from the enemy. So you have to, more than anything, understand this thought that is coming to my mind. Is that fear-based or is it faith-based? That's right. But Andre, how will you ever know if it's fear-based if you don't understand what the truth is? Mm. If you don't know what the Word of God says, how will you be able to recognize if that thought is an attack or if it isn't? That's right. You know, I was thinking about a situation where you get into a habitual habit and you can't overcome that habit, ask yourself the question, why are you doing that habit, that negative thing, that negative thought? You're doing it because there is a part of you that is not fulfilled. Sure. And you're doing it because there's a part of you that is, is not driven by faith. It's still fear driven. Wow, that is so good. Okay, so therefore you need to understand that in your journey of your life, Look at those habits. Look at those things when panic is upon you, when fear is upon you, when uh, negative things have happened in your family. Uh, it's an emotional driven fear yes. that dominates you to try and find in another form satisfaction. And therefore it drives you to a fear way of responding instead of a faith way. Now. When you get the faith of God inside of you and you respond to a situation and a situation comes across your path, you will respond by faith. You will not need something to help you respond to it. Hurt, pain, bitterness. Uh, you can unforgiveness. Name it, unforgiveness. You can name any one of those things that will, will come and dominate your life because you haven't got the mind of Christ over the situation so you will try and find something that helps you numb the pain. Sure. Dull the circumstance. Yeah. All right. Your husband leaves you. Okay. Your wife leaves you. Whichever way. It makes no difference. Let's just say a spouse leaves you. All right. When that spouse leaves you, you hurt. So what do you do? I want to numb the pain. So what do you do? You pick up an addiction. You pick up some form of a, an addictive behavior, whether it's smoking, Just drinking. Just to counteract to the counteract hurt. To counteract the hurt. Rejection. Because the hurt, the pain, the rejection, I don't feel good enough, I don't look pretty enough, uh, and all of these things are dominating over your life, and you pick up, you, your body responds to fear, and you try and have a way out to overcome the fear. Instead of going to God and saying, Mind, you are who God says you are. You are beautiful. You are strong. You are, you his. are his. You are loved when you feel you're not loved. Mm. All right. You don't need a bottle to love you. All right. You don't need an addiction to an alcoholic behavior to love you, to feel self-worth and who you truly are in Christ. 
because you've not allowed your mind to overcome. And Jen, that's what I was thinking about this because because the negative thoughts make you feel unworthy, insecure. Uh, and let me tell you, they're not from God. Not, they're they not, not from, from God. God. They're not from no. God. Because the thoughts of God make you feel worthy. The thoughts from God make you feel bold. The thoughts from God make you feel proud. Hopeful. Hopeful. Mm. Mm. All right. You, you look into the mirror and look who you're looking at in the mirror. If, you, if you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're looking at the natural fleshly self, you're not going to know truly that, that God has anointed and appointed you and given you a, a strategy and a vision and he's got purpose for your life. You'll never understand purpose. You'll never understand destiny as long as you allow this negativity to, to, to rule and control your life. Yes. And that's the battle. That's where the Bible says they're contrary to each other. Yeah. All right, because the Spirit of God says you love. Absolutely. The Spirit of God says you're beautiful. The Spirit of God says you're amazing. The Spirit of God says you are victorious. The Spirit of God says to you, whoever you are, sir, whoever you are, ma'am, that there is a plan for your life. There is purpose for your life. This setback that you face, this difficulty that you face, this trial that you're going through and that you faced, it's nothing. There's something bigger inside of you, and it's called faith. Mm. It's called purpose. It's called destiny. It's called God Himself on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And that's what I want you to understand today. And that, and that is why it's so important mm. that you get into the Word of God. Yeah. That you begin to take His Word and make it your own. Do you know the Word says, and this is what what you may need to know if yeah. you are also woken up in the early hours of the morning and these fearful things. What does God say about that? He says, don't fear. And he makes it very strong. And then he says, cast every care onto him. That's right. Cast your cares on the Lord because he cares for you. So immediately your go-to inside of you, when that worry thought comes, you take that thing captive and you say, hang on, hang on a second. Mm. My responsible action is not to try and fix it in my mind or be worried about it, but it is to cast it over to the Lord immediately. That is what being responsible is. You take that thought and you lay it at His feet and you trust the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom and godly insights on what your part is to make that situation better. It may be something that you cannot do. It, 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 completely out of your control well that's wonderful then you know that he is the one who perfects all things concerning you again that's another scripture mm -hmm. so the bottom line is we have got to get our minds full of the word of God if you don't know what God's promises are concerning you you have absolutely nothing on your side you are not going to be able to recognize what is a fearful thought mm. because you won't see how it contradicts the word. You have to stick to the word. Get the word on the inside of you that it's part of who you are. Isn't that what it says here in Colossians 3? Yeah. Colossians 3 verse 1 and 2, it says, If then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, which is what we've been speaking about, mm. you are now in the spirit, you are born again, that's who you are, it says, sharing his resurrection from the dead, aim at and seek the rich eternal treasures that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Listen to this. Set your minds and keep them set on what is above the higher things, not on the things that are on the earth. What does that mean? Must I think about being in heaven the whole time? No, the higher things are his thoughts. God's way of doing things. What his word says, that's the higher thing. Set your mind on what his word says and keep your mind there. Mm. That's what we have to do. That's the only way you're going to be able to recognize whether that thought is fear-based or faith-based. Because if it contradicts what God's word says and it contradicts his nature, you know it has no right to be in your mind. It came there, but you have control over that thought now. 
and the word says you can take that thing captive and you kick it right out of your mind. You have no, you don't entertain that thought at all, but rather you do what the word says you do. You take every care, you cast it over to him and you listen to the Holy Spirit who is your helper. You listen to him and he will give you the wisdom on what to do. Dear Andre and Jenny, I watched your series for the first time today. Thank you so much for finding a way to help people internalize and realize the Word of God in their lives. I'm on a journey myself each day learning to live by God's Word and promise for our lives. I'm reading the Bible from the start. I wanted to share with you that because of the work that God is doing in me, I have gone through one bad situation to another for the last two years with grace, mercy, favor, strength, and love. Even in the midst of the troubles, God has continued to bless me. I have realized that we have to choose God's way every day. The more you do it, the easier it gets as your life becomes its own proof of God and the Spirit guides you. Now I'm learning about the inheritance we have in Christ, the gifts of the Spirit. God has been more than God to me. Stay blessed. Wow, Jen. What a time we've had in the Word of the Lord today. I mean, it's just been amazing. We could have gone on and on. But you know what? I believe it has come across to you that which was needed for your day today. Write to us. Let us know what a blessing these programs have been. FM at MyFaithTV.com All right, we want to hear from you. We love getting the letters. All right, so please write to us. Send us those letters, send us those questions. And then remember, if you want to get our daily devotion, yes, very we'd good. love to send you our daily devotion every single day to your inbox. Just write to us, put in the subject line, daily devotional, please, and we'll get it off to you. FM at MyFaithTV.com. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for being with us. It's been a great time. And I know I've learned something in the Word. Remember what they say? You can't stop a bird flying over your head, but you can stop it nesting in your hair. So the same thing with the Word of God. You can't stop a negative thought coming into your mind, but you can stop it taking control and rooting of, itself, and rooting itself yes. in your life. We love you from Faith Matters. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week as we continue along these subjects. God bless you.